Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hey everyone, so it's our third day back open at the store and we've had all sorts of interest, people coming through the store, but today I've had a gentleman pop in with a truck full of collectibles that he wants to sell. He's been picking them up over the last couple of years and um, another lady is coming by in about half an hour with even more stuff. So the items are starting to work their way back into the store. We're going to head outside and see what he's got and maybe make a deal. Okay, so is it okay to open your door up here? Yeah, all right, so you have your car nice and packed full of stuff and you were collecting for some time do you still collect uh some stuff yeah mostly advertising signs and i collect knives and axes okay and decided to buy an old uh, classic and figured i'll uh, compensate with selling some of my stuff what are you buying uh, i would like to buy a 67 mustang okay well i don't know this might take a small dent off of the cost of a mustang oh, but yeah okay let's Okay, so oh, I see you've got uh, probably the some things are in here and some things aren't. And... Some are, but I don't think it's accurate at this point. Okay, and my understanding is you want to sell this all right now. You don't want to deal with it. Yeah, it's Peace. all can go. Yeah. It's all one money. Okay, well, let's see if, if we can uh, take a bit of a, a gamble here and then I'll go through some of this stuff. Um, we'll get an idea about what you're asking for and we'll bring it in the shop. I'm kind of having one of those what have I done moments right now because I just had the store perfectly clean and now eh, not so much. Well, I got a 1960s uh, boat motor in excellent shape. Why would I buy it? Somebody's got an old boat and they need a motor. It's summertime. It'll sell. But that is my pile of stuff which we have to sort through today. Uh, culmination of uh, a couple folks dropping things off. Um, we're going to unpack this and go through it and see what we got. Uh, but I definitely want to have the square footage back if somebody comes through here right now and they need access um, It's a little bit limited. So I've got to work 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 uh, and get this all done First I've got to get the boat motor to the back of the shop so we can get it set up well, At least that boat motor had the accessories here. I've got the pressurized gas tank the little jerry cans It's the whole outfit all I'm missing is the boat at this point, but I'm gonna go put that with the boat motor Actually, it looks like that's for mixing for your oil. And that's a little fishing bucket. Little angler's choice bucket there. Okay, that'll all go back in the same area. I'm curious to know what's inside some of these boxes. Okay, we got to look in this big crate. There is, looks like a galleon inside. I have to, boy, they really had it all nailed shut. I'll have to get a hammer and uh, pry that all open. I'll do that in a minute. First, I'll go through some of the easier things to look at. Yes, I'm gonna guess. Dollars for donuts, that's gonna be a typewriter. Ooh, it's upside down. Uh, okay, I'll have to flip that over the other way. That's better, there we go. A little Olympia typewriter. You know, it doesn't have the, the classic lines of the 1920s typewriters, but these are a good, capable machine. If somebody's actually wanting to use a typewriter, something like that's going to be pretty good. We'll go set that in the back, get that set up and out of the box. There is a microscope. Oh, it's got some weight to it. Bosch and Long. Well, that's been sitting around for a while. It's got a little bit of corrosion on the bottom. But it looks like it's pretty intact. It's got the lenses. Let's see, that comes up. Oh, interesting. That's pretty cool. I'll put the cover back on. It's a neat piece. And I'm going to guess and say that the uh, other box, yeah, it's another microscope. 
Antique microscopes are fairly collectible, especially if you got one that's from the 1930s or so. This would have been more probably like a, a classroom or, you know, minor laboratory use. This was definitely better than just a kid's model that you'd see that children would get in the 1950s with their science kits. This is, these are definitely professional microscopes, so that's good. Cool. A little uh, Stanley miter over there for cutting your wood. It's a nice antique thing. I bet Josh could probably have a use for that. Now what's this? Lion Menucator. Lion Duplicator Company. I wonder if this is like a little uh, duplicator, like a little printing press. Let's see. Get that opened up here. Well, this is kind of fun. This would be uh, like a little silk screen. You could use this to make, um, you know, little signs or booklets or whatever you need, really. Kind of cool. If you're Andy Warhol, you can get pretty creative with that. And it looks like it's all there, too. It's got the roller. It's got the instructions. It's a pretty nifty little piece. I'll close that back up. What's inside box number two? A projector with film. I wonder what these movies are. Interesting. Well, there's a little uh, industrial looking film projector by 1940s from the looks of things. This looks like it came right out of a school. Everybody sit down. You're learning about the human body. No! And then they all go running out the door. Um, I think this thing is in uh, pretty reasonable shape. I like the little box they've got with it. Splicer, so you can splice your film together. Neat, looks like they built it out of a different type of crate, like maybe old soda crates that they hammered together. Cool. Every time I open a crate like this, I either am reminded of uh, Indiana Jones opening the uh, Ark of the Covenant. Hopefully there's no ghosts and goblins gonna shoot out of here, or uh, the dad from A Christmas Story getting the leg lamp. Fragile! It's a major award! Well, in this case, it's a ship, and I gotta crack this thing open. I that got this was in the military, bought it in Spain, apparently, and it's been sealed up in this crate probably since the 1960s or so. We'll be some of the first people to get this thing out of here. Hopefully it's not too damaged. I can see some little pieces down here that might have fallen off, so I have to be careful to collect all those, but... We'll get her out of there. That's how far I've gotten and so far. Um, it is Navio Espanol from around 1690, it says there on the plate. I can't pull it off of the uh, base here until I get these brackets off. So I'm gonna go find myself a screwdriver and loosen that off and hopefully I can get this thing out of here and we can see what it actually looks like. Guaranteed that hasn't been out of the box in a long time. There she is, one Spanish galleon out of the crate. Gotta get some of the plastic out of here still. There's a lot of little guns on that. You know, you get into the really high detail ones, you can get kind of expensive. This is a, it's cool. It's an ornamental kind of piece. It looked good. I have a, a boat, a folk art boat on my fireplace. People put them on theirs. Okay, that's one down. Still have all this other stuff to clean up. Okay, I did get a couple showcases. I'm gonna say that this was probably originally a spoon case. You know, people would have collector spoons hanging in there. They've taken it all out. That would be great for putting uh, war medals in, cat badges, even uh, you could put shelves, put die cast cars. A nice little showcase. I like the way it hinges too. It opens up like so. I'm sure we'll find a good use for it all. I'll just sell it to somebody who can. But it's not the showcase I'm interested in. It's what's in these boxes and in the other showcases that has more intrigue to me. Um, I'm going to find a place to put the showcase where it's out of the way, and then we'll dig through. Now, this gentleman was a collector, so he would go to antique malls and buy things. So a lot of this came from antique stores. I always like to find it when it's fresh out of the barn, you know, and you get to discover it for the first time. But again, this is these are all things that have been recollected. Um, like this, he probably saw that. 1878 $1 banknote, Dominion Canada. That has been around the block a couple of times. That's a really early banknote. That Canada only became Canada in 1867, so it's a really early piece of our history. 
also this old catalog from the Pickerton Tobacco Company in Toledo, Ohio. Some people buy these just because they think the graphics are neat or the advertisements are cool. This looks like it's Singer sewing machine attachments. Film. There's quite a few boxes to go through. I'm sure I'm gonna find all kinds of treasures in here. This is just sort of a fun decorative piece. It is enameled, which means it has uh, baked on paint, essentially. It's a toilet paper holder. <laughs> Cute. George Bog Limited, high class sanitary equipment, scientifically hygienic. Suppliers, the nobility. Wait, are, are they implying that the nobles would use a fancy floral looking place to uh, put their droppings? I guess that's what they're saying. You could feel like you're noble too by having this in your washroom. Okay, well, that's one done. Oh, what's this? Johnson's American Anodyne Liniment. Medicine bottle from 1898. Still all wrapped up. Yeah, this looks like an, a cool bottle. I'll have to set that aside in case Bottle Bob sh stops by the shop at some point. Big old two-man saw. You get one guy on one end and another guy on the other here. Or gal, doesn't matter. Two-person saw. And you have at her and you, you saw through that tree. Big piece. People actually buy old saw blades like this. Either you can do art on them and hang them up on the wall, put it up as it is as de decoration. But I've also had people buy these because they use the steel to make knife blades out of. So if somebody's crafting their own blades and, and want the steel, this is excellent steel for crafting uh, knives with. Old saws and saw blades like this can have many purposes. I'm sure someone will think it's neat. I have to put it somewhere safe so the kids that come through my store don't bump into it. Always have a use for these gooseneck lamps. You know, when when we were putting the store together and I wanted them to, to decorate with, I could not find them for the life of me. Now, since we've been open for a little bit, they come in all the time. Uh, this does not have the original, hang on, somebody's put a glass shade on it. It should be like this. But that's okay. It's a good base. You can still do something with it. I might be able to find a shade somewhere, put it back to its original function. All right, what do we have here? Oh, I've had these before, actually. These are, um, this is a bar set, barbershop quartet. That's 1950s, you'd have that sitting in your bar, mounted on something, and then when you need a cork or you need a corkscrew, there you go. Oh, is there one more? Oh yeah, there is another one right there. Bottle opener, the whole set. Okay. Everything is wrapped up so nicely here. I can see that he took great care with the things that he had. Oh yeah, there's an old, well, Hudson Bay. It's, this is not terribly old. You can kind of see it's got the milliliters on it. They weren't doing that until later. So it's probably from the 1970s or 80s. If this was a real Hudson Bay um, ceramic bottle, that could be, you know, like a $700 item. If it was real from, you know, the 1800s or 1900s. But this being a modern one, maybe it's a $20, $30 piece. There are people who collect Hudson Bay merchandise. One of Canada's oldest stores. Actually, it's North America's oldest store. Hudson Bay is, I believe, the oldest um, store in existence in North America. I started off in the fur trade. And I can feel that there's bottles or something going on in here. He's got all this wrapped up really good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unpack this box and we're gonna lay it out on the counter and see what came out. Oh, look, it was wrapped up in even more. Oh, there you go, just a little Pepsi bottle. Had a bunch of those come out of the barn. See, he bought this at an antique store, like, please. People buy these things. You, I find them in the barn and people go, why are you buying old bottles out of a barn? Well, guess what? They sell. People collect them. They put them on their shelves or apparently in boxes and wrap them up forever. But we're going to go through. Okay, I'm going to unpack this whole thing. We'll see what was inside. So that box had a whole bunch of Mountain Dew bottles, an old Walton Mainspring box, some tins, an old padlock with the key. Just kind of a variety. These are uh, doorknob plates for keyholes. This is an oil bottle you puncture into your oil can. So, kind of a fun little variety. Okay. Well, that's a, looks like a 16 millimeter projector. It's got a good look to it, very Art Deco. Let's get this guy out and set it on the counter and see what she looks like. 
There it is, probably a 1940s, judging by the look of it, Keystone projector. Somebody has put a uh, more modern plug on, so it's probably, I'm gonna go ahead and say operational. Fun looking thing, where would you put that? Well, you could use it for projecting. A lot of people would put that on their shelf on display, maybe in their theater room. Doesn't take up a whole lot of space, but gives you that great look and appeal. Neat piece. And now we've got the big box to go through. I recognize this guy. That's going to be one of these bartenders. Yeah. He's smoke. He gets steam coming out of his ears. He shakes a little cocktail. I'll have to throw some batteries in him and see if he does anything still. A lot of times they stop working, but fun little thing. Tea tin. Oh, there we go. Old tobacco cutter. Original paint and pinstriping on there. Those are always a good seller. My counter is getting nice and full. At some point, I'm gonna have to find a home for all this stuff. Multiple projectors, the bottles, it'll all get put away. I just really wanna get this big box out of here so it's easy to walk around. Uh, let's see. Well, that's a big book. The People's Home Library. Liniments, oils, diseases of the digestive organs. This would have been if you if you live out on a farm or you know you have livestock or what have you. This tells you how to take care of everything around your house, and that is a big volume. That's a thick book. That is, I'd say probably 1900s. Should say on the inside cover. 1916. Pretty close. Oh, okay, signed by the author too. Canadian National Telegraph and Cable Blanks in connection with Western Union. That would be, actually that would be kind of cool to put this up in my store here, you know, somewhere on the wall. But they would have uh, been able to do telegraphs from wherever this building was, probably a hotel or maybe a general store even like mine. That's por porcelain enamel again. It's uh, not in the greatest condition, but signs sell. Signs are always very popular coffee bag. There is a time that I needed a whole bunch of those when Josh and I were doing the ceiling of the other building. But it's got something in it. It's got weight to it. What's inside? I'm going to reach down inside. It's a bag of snakes. It's not a bag of snakes. But what is it? Oh. Okay. I feel something. It is. What is this? A decanter? Oh, no. That's not a decanter. That's a seltzer bottle. In a really weird shape too. They would put uh, carbonated water in here at the bar for doing your mixes. And um, this is an early type of wrap because they figured out that uh, the compressed liquid inside would sometimes just blow up and you'd have glass flying all over the bar. The early seltzer bottles are just glass. In the 19, I think it was the teens or 20s, they started making them wrapped like this. I've never seen one that shape before. Full, fill bottom ball only. Use three bulbs only. So I guess the idea was this must be so that the uh, compressed gas doesn't build up too much pressure. That's some real science going on that they're trying out here. Sparklogene, fill bottom ball only. That's a really unusual seltzer bottle. I like it. Cool kids little sewing machine. Miniature sewing machines like this actually do have quite a good following. That should be a pretty easy sale. I think the last one I had like this went for around $100 Canadian. Imagine that's probably worth about the same. Nice little graphics on it. And a kid can actually learn to sew or use it. These are functional sewing machines too, so it's not just to look at. All this digging through the box, I'm finding really cool things in here. But look what's on the bottom. You see that? There's a big sign down there on the bottom. I gotta try and empty all this stuff out to get to it, but it looks like that's a, a flower sign. An old one too. Okay, I gotta do some unpacking here. Every little piece of paper is full of something. It's like a, uh, like Christmas. Oh, beer sign. Let's see. Is it an actual German one? Yeah, it's a German beer sign. Expensive when you buy these as a tourist. 
and you find them at yard sales all the time. But when you buy these things over in Austria or Germany, they're like really expensive, like a hundred euros, which is, um, you know, like 150 or more dollars for something like that. You find these at yard sales for like five, 10 bucks. <laughs> Either way, it's still kind of cool. In fact, uh, a lot of times you'll find the beer steins that have the little flip lid on it. This one doesn't have one, but that little lid that goes on top that you see on these was designed during the plague to keep black flies out because they would uh, settle on the beer. If you ever notice that flies are attracted to the beer, so they'd put a little lid on top to keep you safe. You'd flip it, drink it, close it up, and you'd be safe and uh, have a nice little drink. But that does not have, it's a topless beer stein. That was another bottle. This one's Mountain Dew. I like their, uh, I like their slogan, filled by Clem and Gert, it'll tickle your innards. And look, there, there's the country boys shooting at each other. Pig's wondering what's going on. He's firing off. It's like uh, feuding neighbors. <laughs> That's cute. This was in the box too. Kind of neat. Wait, this is an apple peeler. So you put your apple on there, stick it on. This would clamp onto uh, like a counter or a table and you spin that and it peels your apple for you. Pretty handy little invention. Um, still usable if you actually wanted to. Uh, this would date to around the turn of the last century. Pretty neat piece. You know, that's the great thing about this industrial revolution type stuff. It lasts forever. A little bit of oil, a little bit of maintenance, and you can peel all the apples you want for a hundred years or more. You'll be set. Well, here is the sign. It was a flower sign, Robin Hood flower for sale here. Again, this type of sign would have been mounted on the outside of a building, very much like the one that I own and am in right now. Sure, I could probably find some space around the walls for something like that. But there are collectors who buy these and will probably end up finding a home before too long. The final box. Garage sale stuff. Hmm. No. See something already. This is actually quite an ornate little guy. That is, that's more than a toy. That's an actual miniature sewing machine right there, hand crank. I believe there would have been a a plate on this side that maybe is missing. I can't imagine they'd leave that spring exposed, but what a lovely little piece. There it goes. How cute is that? Really, really good condition overall too. That's a nice little sewing machine. I have no problem finding a home for that. Well, that's a good sign. Hopefully there's some other really good things in this box too. More than just that one sewing machine. That's a saw blade sharpener. Put that on your bench and put your blades in there and away you go. Hood ornament off an old 50s car. Where would this have gone? You might ask, where would that big thing have gone? Well, look, I've got one kind of similar on my own car here. Looks like an airplane. Looks exactly like an airplane, see? That's just somebody else's airplane off of their hood. I don't know if that's Chevy or old. I'm guessing that's a GM thing. They're going for that look, but there we go. Pitted, you can get that ground down and re-chromed. It'll look nice and shiny like mine does. Well, I don't know what that is. That's a pigeon thrower for uh, target practice for shooting. You put your clay pigeon right about there. You fling it back and whing, off it goes. Pull, and then it goes off in the air and you shoot at it. That's a good early one too, cast iron. Still people that use those. Something shiny in here. Something chrome. And there's still another box. I feel like a kid just forging through. Oh wait, that's the spring off of the uh, off the thrower there. Have to figure out how which area that goes back on, but that goes for that. Let's see, lots of cast iron early stuff in here. That's a looks like a meat grinder. Yep, I think he paid forty six bucks for that. Cool thing. Everything is more or less unpacked. Was not expecting the clay pigeon thrower or the antique hypodermic needle set uh, with uh, forceps and other doctor's paraphernalia. The sewing machine, I'm quite happy about. That's a good piece. Um, old coffee bags. The little girl's guitar. Normally I would have brought that home and given to my daughter, but she's a little big for that now. That may find its way to the auction house, go to another home. Uh, just a Kent classical guitar. Not worth a whole lot, but cool. A couple neat signs, which I was happy about. Uh, which I'll show you in a second here, but there was an antique gun case for a smaller size gun. No, no gun inside of it, but it's a case. A little 
key shop sign, the Robin Hood flower sign, and uh, there was also this, the one we saw in the back of the vehicle. It's from a shoe store. The Williams Shoe Company Limited, Brampton, Ontario, Brandon, Manitoba. We sell them. And that would go on the side of your building. Oh, some interesting pieces. Very carefully set that back down. Well, that's it. A really good haul today. Uh, it's always fun to go through these boxes and see what you're going to find. Hope you guys like watching these videos. If you're ever in the Edmonton, come by and see what great antiques we have for sale in the store. Um, and yeah, I've got my work cut out for me today. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.